Hi everybody, my name is Jessica Calderwood and I'm a visual artist who works in obscure craft media and I am really happy to be with you guys today to support Wavepool and their fundraising event and I'm going to share a little bit of my artwork with you and then after my presentation is over I'm going to do a quick demonstration on how to torch fire vitreous enamel. So I hope you like it. Thanks. Hi, this is Jenna Schaefer, Director of Ombre Gallery and also a board member of Waypool, a fantastic community arts organization. I'm going to give a little talk today about Jessica's work and we currently have her exhibition in the gallery called What Lies Beneath. Come check us out. Jessica grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. Her grandfather was a machinist and her grandmother worked a drill press. It seemed metalsmithing was in her blood. It may be predestined. She attended the Cleveland Institute of Art, where at the time they had this curious major called enameling, which was a subset of the metalsmithing and jewelry major and firmly rooted in the crafts. Enameling is the process of fusing powdered glass to metal. It's extremely versatile and painterly, allowing multiple color applications and firings with a kiln or torch. As a student, Jessica was really captivated by what the crafts had to offer, the exposure to new skills and processes, and the community that forms through the use of shared space and tools. Jessica's work has always been a reaction to her own life experiences and a way to figure out how to navigate the world. She had always considered herself an image maker, but working in metal and enamel allowed her to explore drawings and sculptural forms which she found to be exciting and challenging. As Jessica continued her deep dive into metal smithing, she began to hone her skills and explore historical formats while trying to find her ways to still make the content relevant. This piece, titled Sticky Fingers, is a die-formed wall platter. It became an interesting format to juxtapose images about consumption and eating disorders. Jewelry is a very large part of the metals and enameling field. Frankly, it's hard to avoid. She started to explore the idea of these pieces interacting with the body. She enjoyed the intimate scale, the challenge of functionality, and the fact that these works, when worn, created opportunities for dialogue in a way that something hanging over a couch could never accomplish. These initial jewelry experiments led to a studio practice that she has kept for over a decade, working on both ends of the metal smithing spectrum from functional to non, large scale and small. This conversation between formats has been a wonderful way for Jessica to flesh out composition, content and materials. Floral Fictions is a series that Jessica began in 2010, which combined botanical elements with fragments of the figure. She created these works to be funny, with a twinge of sourness. The flower forms became a negation or denial of what lies beneath. They are at once powerful and powerless, beautiful and absurd. At a certain point, Jessica realized that she needed to make something in the round. She became interested in the conversation surrounding high and low craft materials and the emergence of the DIY craft culture. The materials themselves became another layer through which to interpret the work. This first sculpture includes earthenware clay, fiberglass, enamel, and craft store silk flowers. In 2014, she was awarded a residency at the Kohler factory in Wisconsin. She used this time to explore mold making and slip casting in vitreous china in order to improve the workmanship in her sculptures and to explore more complex forms. The residency is designed to aid artists in an industrial setting to create works that would not be possible in their personal studios. This experience drastically changed her studio work. On the left is a small study that Jessica made during her residency, and the image on the right is of her large-scale finished sculpture. As much as she enjoyed working large, there was something undeniably powerful and intimate about the smaller-scale work and it led to a new series. The smaller scale allowed her to create these works in her home studio. She also began expanding her material language. 
She revisited the works of Judy Chicago and Miriam Shapiro and began incorporating fibers into her more abstracted botanicals. Jessica started to search for new materials in earnest, with a focus on domestic crafts like polymer clay and felting. She was interested in exploring the resistance of each new material and pushing hard and soft qualities visually in the work. Jessica realized that by really understanding metal and enamel, she had an immediate gauge to base the working properties of all other things. In his recent book, Fewer, Better Things, Glenn Adamson talks about material intelligence, which he describes as a deep understanding of the material world around us, an ability to read the material environment, and the know-how required to give it new form. Jessica realized that this had been her definition of crafting all along. Recently, Jessica has been interested in exploring stylized drapery. Within an art historical context, drapery refers to academic painting. Within the context of the home, drapery can also be a symbol of comfort, rest, and solace. In this sculpture titled Weathering the Storm, it is used for protection from external forces. Jessica is continuing to push surface to play with illusion of hard and soft. In the piece titled Balance, the draped tablecloth is made from forming copper sheet metal and is then coated with rayon flocking. Miniaturization is another focus, recreating a plate in enamel and copper and fake fruits formed from polymer clay. Labor and repetition is an important part of her work. To create this miniature braided rug, hundreds of glass seed beads were meticulously glued to a copper form with tweezers and then melted in a kiln to fuse the pattern in place. Gesture has always been an important part of this series. A subtle tilt or shift in a form can say a lot. By creating all of her components separately and assembling with cold methods like metal pins, screws, and tension fittings, Jessica found the freedom to play with the forms before settling on a fixed composition. Recently, Jessica has been collaborating with her students and faculty at the Glick Center for Glass to create blown glass forms for her sculptures. Moving fluidly through different materials has shown her where there are bridges or connections between processes. Finding the expressive limits of each material has been part of the impetus behind this work. During this time of isolation, Jessica has been grateful to have a home studio to keep making. With that said, the limitations of only working with what she currently has materials of has been a good challenge. She currently has a solo exhibition at Ombre Gallery and Over the Rhine on Vine Street, which features her sculptures and brooches shown together as conversational pairings. Here you will see her study called Cream Brooch, which uses the techniques of glass beads and copper enameling, which she then uses in her sculpture spout. This piece titled Isolate was completed at the beginning of the spread of COVID-19. Seeking solace has been a theme lately, and the blown glass elements create an interesting foil for the overall mood of this work. Here the glass spheres have been sandblasted and etched to give the illusion of softness, like they could be squeezed and have some give. Here are some additional pairings of sculpture and studies that Jessica has in her current exhibition, What Lies Beneath. Now we'll return to Jessica in her studio, where she'll show us her enameling techniques. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to torch fire your own enamel project. So I'm going to be using a small sheet of copper, and I have some enamel, which is powdered glass. And this is a clear enamel, so it looks white now, but after we fire it, it's going to come out kind of peachy, coppery, and beautiful. So to apply the enamel, I'm going to sift some so that way it's a nice even coating across my metal. And then I'm going to carefully place this on a trivet. 
which is a fireproof surface that's going to allow us to get heat underneath it with the torch. So you can use a kiln but and melt it on, but we're going to use an acetylene torch. And the enamel melts at 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to actually get my torch right underneath it. And try to even, evenly heat it. until the entire surface goes bossy. And it's already done. It's instant gratification. Let's see. And where?